and I'll switch on to my report here. Um, three different levels of needs. So firstly, I'm going to share my screen and I want to remind you of something you will have seen in a video, but it's, it's a very important point about modeling. It's an important point about the goals of this class and about the goals and need of this exercise that we'll be pursuing together. So more so than either of uh, the other two methods we explore with age, um, age based modeling, you see really pronounced differences between three layers of substantive work on models. Um, with system dynamics, for example, model formulation often is kind of gives you the model implementation. You have a declarative model formulation. Anyone know what I mean when I say declarative? What does that mean? I think you will have encountered declarative languages, maybe prologue in 340 or something like that. What do I mean if I say something is declarative? You're basically specifying what you're characterizing, not the details of exactly how it is to be enacted or, or, or simulated. So with, with system dynamics modeling, you're sketching out model structure and you're providing some formulas, but really the model formulation gives the model implementation. It, it implies the model, how the model gets simulated over time. The numerical integration follows from the model formulation. So you don't have this big separation with system dynamics here. And even with discrete event simulation, a lot of the model implementation just kind of follows along formulating it. But with age-based modeling, there are challenges, there are barriers to age-based modeling at each of these levels. All three techniques have challenges with conceptualization. When I say conceptualization with models, what do I mean? Can anyone remind me? Like, what are some elements of conceptualization? The scope. the scope of the model is the key thing. Yeah, what is what are the scopes and what is endogenous? Endogenous endogenous ignored. These are all parts of conceptualization. But model formulation, what I'm talking about is actually characterizing the the mathematical or statistical structure of portions of the model. Getting getting more specific to conceptualization, kind of what you want the model to, to represent in terms of the relationships. And then finally, there's implementation. For agent-based modeling, what is the implementation involved? Talk about implementation of an agent-based model. What do you think that might involve? Some what? Begins with P. You can use two words for it. One is longer, the P word. There's also a shorter C word. Both end or gerunds, they end in ing. There's a D in here. And there's no, there's nothing here. Coding, coding, programming, right? Um, uh, okay, uh, you get the gist. Um, so, so the the. The model implementation involves some coding, some bits of programming, sometimes more programming. Um, and when people come to agent based modeling, often that's what they focus on is like, oh, I got to learn the language for it. I've got to learn that logo language or I've got to learn Java or whatever. But the actual deeper issues um, are, are at these upper layers. And the things often that determine model success are at these upper layers. Um, a little bit like we're software engineering, if we don't have the requirements right, if, if you you know if you don't know where you want to go, it's hard to get there. <laughs> um, if, if you don't know what the requirements are of the program you're going to build, it's unlikely it will meet people's needs because you don't know what they need. Right. Um, so with software, we uh, uh, we have this issue as well. But with modeling, you really often are dealing more with okay, I have a problem I want to address. I have to conceptualize a model, endogenous, endogenous, ignored, set the scope, and then I've got to get pretty specific about how I characterize it. It's it's mathematical structure, 
And that's what we're doing with state charts. That's what we're doing with messages. That's what we're doing when we have stocks and flows, et cetera. Um, so we're going to go through an exercise, which to some degree involves all of these. And I posted it to the course site. Now, many of you here have laptops. Some do not have laptops. And we're going to need to work with this because uh, I'm hoping that everyone could get involved in working with this. Now, what I have an idea in mind is, is to have some pair programming going on or, or pair modeling. So we're going to try this out and see how it goes. Okay. Um, and if we need to, for future sessions of this course, we're talking with Wade, and I think we're going to try to get the mobile lab here, which is a, a lab that lets you bring computers with any logic installed and and bring them to the classroom. Um, so um, I'd say roughly half the class has laptops, maybe a little bit more. Um, could you try to, if you don't have a laptop, could you look around you and try to spot someone with a laptop? and see if you could pull up next to them. Could, could you try that? So you could at least hand in something jointly and try to work towards what I'm doing? Yes. Um, in the in class exercise, yes. you said it's U1901, year 1901. 1901? It's not. Sorry? You are 122 years late for the assignment. Oh. I don't know how that happened. <laughs> uh, I didn't even think it would allow that. Okay. Um, okay, that's that's wild. Um, I uh, well, I'll be. Um, huh? Um, I have no idea how. That happened. That's the most wild thing I've seen. <laughs> um, don't tell me. <laughs> oh no. Uh, I think that's by 2023 authorizing. Right? No, the, you can't. You on the due date there is just like the maybe. Yeah. maybe maybe up here. Maybe. Uh, let's let's give it a try. Yeah. Okay, go. cool. Answer, good good call. <laughs> okay, but I also set it to 1 1 p.m. and it's changed it to 1258. That's weird. Okay. Anyway, um yeah, that's uh well, I'll be. Okay. Yeah, so if you could pull up to others, that would be great, okay? Um and uh because when you turn this in, you're going to turn it in at the end of class and you're going to let me know who works with whom. Okay. Oh, oh, there is one other thing I've got to say here. Um, uh, this is a topic I, I don't like going through, but it's an important one. Um, in the course syllabus, there's a statement about academic honesty. Um, and uh, I want to ensure that all things handed in are, are the product of yourself, either alone or with a group, and not take them from someone else. Um, I want to warn people, if uh, I find that people are copying assignments or copying take-home exercises, I will go after it. And uh, I don't want to be in that position. I don't want you to be in that position, but I will pursue it. Okay, It's a very serious matter. And I have gone before academic, uh, academic honesty committees before. And it's not a pretty matter to have a student dragged before a committee, um, a committee of my peers, fellow faculty, me being asked to come in and be a witness and testify, and having the student have a risk of being kicked out of the university. I don't want to see you in that position, so do not do not put me in that position because I will pursue it. Okay, and I will just tell you, it is going to be quite easy for me to find out if someone has taken and copied someone else's take-home exercise and pasted it at their own. It will be equally easy if that goes on at the level of the assignment. So listen, the take-home exercises are designed to be graded very generously. Do not try to copy it from someone else 
or I will come down really hard on it. Um, this class is built on trust. And if I find that trust is, is violated, uh, it will it will not be in your favor, okay? So just a warning, I don't like to have to go into it. I shouldn't have to, but um, I wanna make sure that that's understood upfront here because I don't want anyone thinking that that will go unnoticed, okay? Not sad on that. Okay, so the take home exercises uh, is, is geared around a certain, so, so it turns out that one of the big killers of Canadians, um, and in fact worldwide in the developing world or developed world is, is heart disease. And heart disease has many contributing factors, but one of the biggest ones historically, and even until present day, is smoking. People smoking cigarettes. Now Smoking is not merely associated with, it's not merely something that tends to go along. You know, people who have heart disease happen to be smokers. Now, smoking actually drives the development of heart disease. It's understood the biology of it, um, how it damages the heart. Carbon monoxide generated by the cigarettes and carcinogens cause lung cancer uh, for carcinogens, but carbon monoxide and other factors damage the heart. Um, and so suppose you're asked to build up a simple model to, to examine the impact on heart disease, the, the burden of heart disease, how many people have heart disease, for example, it might die of heart disease, of smoking cessation program. Okay, so, so we have smoking, and then we're going to have heart disease and death from heart disease. And we're interested in how getting people to quit smoking or avoid starting smoking will lower the, the fraction of people that have heart disease and, and the number that die from it. Okay, that, this is the basic idea. The stakeholder here wants to start simple, but eventually we're going to use this example, I'm hoping, across multiple classes to add in more and more. But today we're gonna start simple. And we're going to use this to, to reinforce some of these concepts. You watched a video on hazard rates, chance per unit time of developing, you know, of, of leaving a state, for example. And I I tried to make some points in that video, for example, about their differences from probabilities. And within this class, I want to rehearse those ideas, but I want to go through them um. In, in an applied context. And I want to also link them in with some other ideas involving open populations and state chart, features of state charts, et cetera. And I wanna bring you to some challenges that lie in some of these other areas as well. Um, these areas of model formulation, model conceptualization. So smoking, and you wanna think about, okay, how would lowering, you know, getting people to quit smoking or getting to avoid starting smoking, how could that lower heart disease? And this model is going to eventually include things like impacts of peers, like people might, if, if people around me smoke, I'm more likely to start smoking, for example. Um, uh, peer pressure, for example, might be part of it. It's also going to include things like it, well, in the U.S., we still have like these big billboards advertising cigarettes that might influence whether I quit or continue to smoke, uh, whether I start smoking, and eventually we may include those things. So, based on these factors, um, first of all, what what sort of modeling might be appropriate in this one? If I want to, if I want to capture geographic factors and like my the networks around me, how it influences the map. Yeah, that's more Asian based. It's Asian based. Yeah, trying to do that with an aggregate model. You know, how are you going to capture the fact that smokers, you know, or or a, you know, smokers cluster and networks, and and you have this influence of nearby neighbors and networks or exposure to a billboard, that's not easily captured in system dynamics. And, and why not discrete event simulation?
you're not talking about resources, the track there. We're not talking about resources. We're not talking about some structured workflow, like where you go through a set of processes that you get operated on by these processes. You know, you get x-rayed, you know, an MRI, and you're ready for a bed or something. That's very DES, but this is not DES. You're not going through these set of structured processes. So ABM sounds like a good fit. It is a good fit. Yes, uh, for the district event. So uh -huh. when we say when when the, when we want to make sure that the people don't uh, quit the smoking or actually don't get to their so I mean at least in my mind there are there should be some places uh for buildings or like, corporations that kind of um like psychological or maybe I think you're talking about maybe smoking cessation programs yeah, that they exactly. could be in. so can we say that we can use this week event inside the region this yes we could much. yes and and in fact we may be eventually elaborating this very example version 20 of this example or 30 may eventually involve some representation of structured so smoking cessation programs where you go through a set of states right yeah. Yeah, um, and the theme song of it is given there. Um, yeah. Also, doesn't um, I mean technically when when you become a person who is smoking, doesn't it become it make becomes a process? Process itself isn't it? A process. Say itself. this again. A person who becomes smoker who is smoking it starts becomes a. Uh, it doesn't have a process to become smoking because I've always I think it's what I hear in the books and my other research was. Um, well, as you said, peer pressure. So yeah, it's a process. So it, this yes. process has resources. So resources is what like friends, the person who yes. is that celebrity, uh, the environment that he's living. Yes, in. yes, the availability of cigarettes in the corner store that will sell to a teenager or stuff yeah. like that. These are these are things that could be taken into account. And it's one more reason why agent-based modeling is a particularly good resource, actually, because you could take into account nearby corner stores that sell cigar are willing to sell cigarettes to minors or the availability of of uh, you know cigarettes uh, passed from older sibling to younger sibling or something like that. Yeah. Okay, so so in terms of model conceptualization. We're starting to get a sense that we're talking about things that might fit in a little bit better to an agent-based formulation. But let's start to think what things uh, for this model might be endogenous. What things would we need to be endogenous in a model like this to, to address the needs? Yes, Ben, is it? Yes. Cigarette smoke today. Ben. Yeah, something like the the cigarette smoking levels right now um, that are occurring right now. Yeah, okay, good. That's endogenous. The model should be generating that because we might say we want a smoking cessation program or we'll ask, you know, how does that impact how many people are smoking? What else would we want to, 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 to have us investigate the goals of the model? What else, Matthias? Maybe a passive smoking thing. Okay, so passive smoking is an interesting one. There might be a matter of, yeah, I'm exposed to smoke by others, nearby people, right, in the same environment. And once again, that suggests the value of having like place and people nearby and exposed to other people, which again, sort of an age-based thing. But for this very start, if we want, if we want to start with a super simple model of smoking and what's the other thing we're interested in? Heart disease. heart disease. Yeah, but it's more than correlation. It's how does it impact heart disease? Yes, and name? Rebecca. Rebecca. Yeah, so so that would be an important thing for it to capture, right? Is is how how people who smoke, how they develop heart disease versus people who don't smoke, for example. And to be able to look right now at and people with heart disease, count, counting the number that have heart disease and say, okay, these are smokers and these are aren't. Um, that could be very important for asking what if questions to be able to count the number of heart uh, smokers or the number of people with heart disease. And I said heart disease and death from heart disease. So what else would have to be endogenous? Death, death from heart disease. And maybe death from other things too. People would still die, you know, eventually. But they're more likely 
So unfortunately, die quickly if they have heart disease, right? Yes, hard line. Can also say that uh, not always people die that were told with the smoking because of heart disease. They sometimes die uh, by getting cancer. That's true. They they would die, could die via cancer. They could also die because of kidney damage, yeah. for example. It can also worsen the probability of getting diabetes. And if you're dealing with those multiple possibilities, it turns out for reasons we'll be exploring, and we'll see a little bit of it today. In fact. Agent-based modeling is actually a particularly good fit, okay? Heterogeneity, capturing differences between people and especially different processes operating in people. So heart disease, smoking, the number of people who have heart disease, number of people dying from heart disease, number of people smoking right now, these are all endogenous things. Exogenous things, I said we want to examine certain types of interventions. What, what might be exogenous here? Okay, okay, well, number of getting smoked is probably a function of how many smokers, but I did say in the problem formulation that we're going to have, um, okay, now where, 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 where is it? Oh my goodness. Um, here, I, I said um, we, we want to examine the impact of smoking cessation programs, smoking prevention. So we need to be able to say like, let there be this smoking cessation program, right? And the model will capture its impact. Do you see what I mean? Yeah. And similarly with prevention. Yes, sir. Okay, is is that how, how long it takes from a normal person to become a smoking and how long it takes from the smoking to have uh, become a person who has heart disease and blood? Okay, good, good. Certain model assumptions about how much smoking you know, like how much it impacts heart disease, for example, how long it takes to develop heart disease if you are a smoker and if you're not a smoker, for example, or how much it shortens your life if yeah. you're a smoker. These are assumptions, so we might also want to- Also vice versa, uh, how long it takes from a smoking person to actually, uh, you know, become, a, a, again, a person who is not smoking using those- Okay, so of, yeah, so yes. to what degree smoking people will try to quit these are all aspects of exogenous factors. We're going to need to make some assumptions about how much worse the smoking worsened my chance per year of getting heart disease, for example, or how much, how, if I'm a smoker, how often will I try to quit, right? Um, and what's my likelihood of staying, staying quit? Matthias? How much a person smoke? Like a heavy yeah, okay. Heavy versus light. Okay, excellent. So all of these are assumptions we bring to the model as exogenous. The model is to, at some level, represent them or, or capture them, but it's not generating them. We tell it to the model. The model doesn't tell us these things. The, exo the endogenous thing, number of people who are with heart disease, smokers, not. The, the number of people smoking, these are endogenous. Okay, so, um, and the stakeholder wants to start, wants to start simple. I wanna start simple. So, uh, so this, we're going to be ignoring a lot of things initially, a great deal of things. But you gotta build it up at like <laughs> the remaining time for at least the start of it, okay? Um, so, ladies and gentlemen, I've just dealt with, some key elements here of model conceptualization. Now we're gonna go down to model formulation. I wanna ask you, who we have? We have smoke factors. Think about smoking. Smoking, you wanna think about, okay, so we have smokers, non-smokers, and I heard earlier you mentioned quitting. So somehow we have to represent dynamics associated with smoking, right? That people could be smoking or not, or, or they could quit. And, and we want to think about that. We have to represent that. And then we have to represent whether or not people have what? Heart disease. Heart disease. Okay, so what? Yes, uh-huh. Um, I don't know how is that connected to this, but um, people who are have susceptible to have heart disease. So, for example, we say the family history of that person 
uh, people in their history have uh, more are more likely to get diabetes or heart disease or cancer. Or yes. Cancer. So I would just recur. The stakeholder wants to start simple. Okay. Um, uh, like we have forty five minutes left. Sure. Okay. So um, sorry. And and actually, it's beyond this class. It's really important you start simple. You saw the video on that earlier. You want to start incrementally, build this up. So most things are initially going to start either ignored or exogenous, and we can add things in. But if we if we shoot for the huge model, chances are it'll take five times as long as we think. The funding may run out. We may never get there. It's much better to get value along the way. Does anyone in here take a 370? Okay, so you have some exposure to like agile methods. This idea of delivering value along the way, minimal viable product. Does that ring a bell? Yes. Get delivering value along the way is key, right? And learning along the way, what does the stakeholder want next? With modeling, this is even more important because there's discovery along the way of, oh, I didn't think about that or I didn't realize that. And that shapes it. Okay, so that's what we're going to be doing. So maybe come early April, we will have family history. That could be a very good thing, but one step at a time. Okay? Okay. Um, the things of opportunity cost. If we put our effort there, we won't put it into something else. Okay. So I want to think about model formulation. These things are, are, are going back to model conceptualization. Model formulation. So we have we have smoking in these different categories of smoking. And when it comes to cessation, we're talking about something that changes that category. Right? So one type of thing there is we cease smoking. We were a smoker, now we're no longer going to be a smoker. What other changes happen with respect to smoking? What other things? Yeah. I mean, you mean in biology or in terms of socialization? And in, in, in terms of things like quitting and, and that sort of thing, okay. that, that level of behavior. That is a lot of behavior. So, well, it is possible that the user wants to come back to smoking. Okay, yeah. So they might relapse to smoking, right? They, Having quit, they might relapse. This is actually shockingly common. And I'm not saying that's pretty sad of smoking. It's just like, it's really hard to quit smoking. It, it's an extraordinarily addictive substance, the nicotine. So, so quitting is a reality for many smokers. Many smokers try quit many times a year and then they fall back. Um, what else? What, else, what other type of change applies with respect to smoking behavior? Yeah. And see with what you do is you get broken the light smoke. Okay, yeah. So light, light to heavy, you change intensity. So maybe initially you're having a cigarette with buddies once every week or something, but then you start to get get more, but that's often involved in, yes, or like the chance that the uh, person who is smoking actually has access to the areas for quitting the smoking or if that matters, the education. For okay, the okay. So, so this is true, but I'm trying to keep it at a very high level. I'm asking what other types of general high level behavior change? I start, start uh, to, to smoke again after I quit. I quit smoking. What's the other key one? I, yes, Rebecca, is it? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I start smoking in the first place. That's a really important one, right? If we want to, if we want to prevent smoking, that was one of the things that the stakeholder wants. That's the thing I want. It's you know I want to be able to signal prevention of smoking. So Rebecca's exactly right. We want to. We have to think about people starting smoking, right? We can't just consider people. Who are smokers or former smokers? We we have to consider those who never start, and that's an important thing because if we can prevent people from starting, we might be able to head off a lot of harm. And so that's on the smoking side, and then on the heart disease side, we gotta consider what people who. What are, what are some categories of relevance here? People who have heart disease or 
or yeah, don't have heart disease, okay? And, and we could represent levels of heart disease and is it minor and severe? Let's stick very simple. And what sort of change would happen? Development of heart disease. And unfortunately, generally you don't get, you don't go in the reverse direction. <laughs> What other thing could happen to someone with very severe heart disease? They could, they could die. They could die. Yeah, they're actually at high risk of dying. So, so we're we're starting to think about states and possible states they could be in with respect to smoking, possible states they could be in with respect to heart disease. Right? Um, what what's a way in? In the age of based modeling, we can capture states a person could be in with respect to a concern with a what? State chart. In fact, the state chart shows at once the states, the actions that change the state, and the rules that govern that action. So, okay, so we have that. We can think about that for smoking, right? Maybe never smokers, as Rebecca said, current smokers. And former smokers, as Ardalan had said, um, and then movements between them, right? How would we capture that in a state chart? With transitions, right, between them. But then we have heart disease as well. We have heart so how, how are we gonna, how are we gonna have both? If the person stays longer in the smoking state, then they will get- Okay, if the person stays longer in the smoking state, they may be more likely to what? Develop heart develop disease. disease. Okay, good. So we have smoking. Somehow we need smoking in our model. Somehow we need heart disease in our model. How are they going to play together? What? How are they going to be represented? Messages. Okay. We, okay. Yeah. So messages from what to what though? From uh, about smoking. Okay. So how are we gonna? I I heard earlier state charts are our friend, right? Yeah, so so Harriet. Yeah, bingo. Your your intuitions are really good. I'll tell you that. Two state charts, ladies and gentlemen. We could have two state charts. We could have one state chart with respect to what? Smoking. Smoking. Maybe never smoker. Maybe current smoker. And what's the other one? Former smoker, yeah, someone who's quit, former smoker, right? Um, how would the arrows go here? Never to, never to current. Is there one the reverse direction? No, that's never, right? How about between current and former? Yep, yeah, there is. Okay, two way. Okay, so current to former, what does that represent? Quitting, right? Quitting. And then former to, to current, yeah, we'll call it relapse, okay? And maybe we'll call this one up here, never to current initiation, or you could start it, you could call it, you know, starting or, or, or um, yeah, um, uh, starting smoking, what have you. Okay, um, so, so this is, this is smoking. What do we have for a heart disease if we want to start really simple? Okay, okay, yeah, you can call it this up. So I'll call it um healthy heart or something, health healthy uh heart or something like that. And this might be what? Um heart disease. Heart disease, yeah. Okay. Um or you could call that no heart disease and this heart uh heart disease, right? And which way does uh is there a transition here? Um as from health to health. Uh, heart disease. Also, it can be go that way as well. Uh, much uh, if the heart is really damaged, it's very hard to go the other way. So. I mean, we can surgery, we can change it. I mean, surgery. Uh, well, okay, yeah. surgery is more like taking them out of here and putting them into there, right? It's like this intervention. It's a message-based transition. You do surgery or something, and you give them a yeah, but. Uh, a, a valve from a cow or something. Yeah. Um, okay. So, um, so Harriet had the understanding of two state charts here. Now, help me understand. If we have these two state charts, um, how do they relate to a 
to a person now. So there's a person. Um, so could this person be in only one of all these states or what? They have to be both. Yes, they have to be both. This is a key thing. So maybe let's suppose a person is in current smoker here. That's why I'm kind of shading it in. Maybe I'll put it around here. Um, suppose they're in current smoker there. And with respect to heart disease, uh, maybe maybe they're in the heart disease state. Is that possible? Yes. Could they be in current smoker here in healthy heart? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Now, over time, they get more and more likely to be in this one, right? So somehow, and I heard O'Jewel say it earlier, somehow them being in these states, like be, being a current smoker, will be doing what? Like if, if they go from never smoker to current smoker, how does that impact heart disease? Yes. Just like the uh, infection that we saw that it has a time to turn into something. Okay. And maybe we can kind of put a message that says, okay, and time it, for example, say, uh, zero point I don't know zero point one uh, times it takes for that uh, um, current smoker to develop heart disease. Okay, so what you're saying is being in a never smoker state compared to a current smoker state, being in the cur current smoker state will have what impact on heart disease? It, it makes it, it an more like, likely like, per year or someone will develop heart disease, right? So listen. What I'm teaching here is actually really like these are things that a model are just sort of things immediately of, but it's it's a hard thing to I realize a lot of students stumble over this. What I, what I'm trying to outline here is actually how to start thinking about taking a description and putting it to pieces of a model. So one of the key insights here is that you know there's kind of stages of smoking right and they're not all just sort of linked to everyone to everyone there's actually a structure to this right like you don't go from a former smoker state to a never smoker state there's more structure there. and similarly there's structure with respect to heart disease um and there are these transitions that go between them um and not everything transitions to everything else so there is this structure but then there's this interaction between the two, right? Um, and we can capture that uh, as well. We have to capture that to really understand how quitting smoking, where would quitting smoking, how would that change things? If I said, oh, I successfully get someone to quit, how would that change things here? What would it change? Stop them wherever they are in terms of heart state. Oh, oh. Oh, okay, but most immediately, if I get someone to quit smoking, what have I done? You made them former smokers. Okay, from where? From did, I, did I shift them from no, never? From current smokers. From current to former, right? So somehow like me intervening, it's like there's a lightning bolt, right? <laughs> and, and it leads them to go across a transition here, more likely to go, right? While that program's in place. Um. How about prevention of smoking? Where would that impact things? Prevention of smoking? Yeah. From non-current smoker remains non-current smoker. Okay, yeah. So there the lightning would sort of slow down initiation or something, right? It would, it would make it less likely people start to smoke, right? Now, later we'll start to talk like people generally don't start to smoke at any old age. You know, you don't see... Uh, uh, 78 year old granny starting to say, I'm going to take off the book or something, right? Uh, and you don't see a baby, you know, puffing away or something, right? Um, but smoking tends to be socially embedded and, and it occurs at certain ages. What ages are the ages where people are most likely to start smoking? Anyone? When they are teenagers, so from 15, 14 years old up to 30 years old. Yeah, no, no. It is very culturally dependent. I, I will tell you that you know the, the statistics on this are are very you know and and there are definitely records in North America of kids starting to smoke at eleven or twelve. Um, and but generally they don't start smoking beyond their what what age do you guess? After they after they're in their early 
Well, actually, even 20s, they they rarely, beyond the first, like, 21, 22, beyond that, they tend not to start this one. Um, they're past that age of highest risk. So we'll come back to that. But the point is, like, when we think about behavior, we can layer them on these diagrams. When we think about interventions, we can layer on them di the diagrams. When we think about operations, right, uh, we can think about even them taking place. Um, you know, if you had some sort of method to improve other aspects of their situation, like diet, maybe it would slow down the risk of going from unhealthy to healthy, right? Even though there's still a current smoking. So we're starting to get some ideas. And I want to highlight, with respect to this notion of where we're at, what we've been talking about is going in, in, in the model mapping stage. This is a map of a model. Is this a model? Can I run it right now? Yeah. I mean, take it. I mean, you... that'd be cool if this blackboard could run it, wouldn't that? Um, so where's the run button? There it is. Um, okay, unfortunately, it, its output is not very good. I have to listen to it. Um, so no, no, it can't run right now. This cannot yet run. This is not a runnable specification, but it is a model map, and it's useful, right? It, it lets me kind of sketch out where I'm going. What do we need to do to make it runnable? Uh, yeah, I heard a bunch. Harriet, you had your hand up? Yeah, we need to implement it. We need to put it in any logic, right? We've been thinking about some aspects of the formulation. We have some ideas about this, but we need to be more specific, actually. Some aspects of formulation still have to come. Like, is this a rate transition or is it a timeout transition? And then we need to, we, we need to, to, to implement it. You want to do that? Yes. Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay. Just, just one thing. Yes. Can uh, we can say that non smoker also can uh, have a flash in the heart disease, but how is that going to do this uh, smoking? Is that when the person is among the people who are smoking, well, yeah. it has a effect on his heart as well, technically, but not as fast as the person who is smoking himself. But yeah, so this okay. doesn't say that someone who's not in a current smoking can't go this way, right? Like, like this transition is there, and we could say someone with current smoking is more likely per year, is what we said, than someone who's never smoked, right? But we didn't say like they can't go on this transition unless they're a never smoker. If, well, let me let me ask this. I, I like this question actually that Ardalan asked. Suppose suppose you could not develop heart disease except where you're a current smoker. Only suppose only current smokers could develop heart disease. Is there a way we could simplify this? Uh, yes, Ben. Yeah, you can just add the it as a subsequent step to being a current smoker. Yeah, just a substate of current smoker, right? Like we wouldn't want it as a separate state chart, right? Like if it were, if the only people who could get heart disease were current smokers, what you'd have is current smoker as a, as a hierarchical state is a what's called an antilogic a compound state. And then within it would be a substate without heart disease, current smoker without heart disease, and then one current smoker with heart disease, and we'll go between them, right? Does this make sense? Okay, so let's let's get a move on. How, how about that? And let, let's get something down on our model. So I'm going to share my screen here, and we're gonna we're gonna get going. No, we don't want to look at bail and remand and hearings and Moving to the courts. Sorry, that's 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 a different model. Um, uh, that's that's one of our hackathon models. Okay. Um, so uh, let's go. We'll do new model, and this will be smoking and heart disease v one. What do you think? Okay, and I'm going to choose the model time unit. Choose the model time unit thoughtfully, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to choose it to years because it's convenient for me to think about. It. Remember, all this means is what does one mean in time? And it's convenient to think about just one being a year, like chance per year of starting to smoke, for example. If I did it per day, it would be kind of awkward. And some statistics, like the chance of developing heart disease on a per day basis, it's kind of messy to think about. So I prefer to think about it in years. But either one I, I could do, just it's kind of a uh, pain. Okay. Yeah, sure. Um, if I want to save it, yes, it won't be available. Okay, fine. 
Okay. Um, smoke and heart disease. Okay, what do I need to do? This is going to be an age based model. What do I need to do, ladies? Sorry? Yeah, I need to have an agent. I have to capture a theory of agenthood. True or not? True. Okay. Okay, so let's go add an agent. This will be our person. This is our represent person or the theory of personness with respect to a model. I'm going to call this person. Okay. I'm going to create it from scratch. None of those 3D fancy icons that some of you added. None of that for me. Okay. I double click on it. Let me let me close these other things because I don't want to confuse you. I I <laughs> I have some other models that I have to worry about. You you folks don't have to worry about them, but I do. Oh my goodness. Let me let me just go back and and I'm gonna I'm gonna say file close of uh, all uh, close uh mumble. Let me let me do this. Close others. Boom. Okay. Save to the justice one. No. No. Okay. Um. Okay. Uh. Okay. You ready? Okay. Here's person. Okay. I want to add an image for person. Okay. Let's go. Let's go do this. Let's. Um. I'm. I'm gonna do this quickly. Follow along, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to go to this palette and I'm going to add in in the presentation. Oh man, it's it's not there anymore. I'm going to have to go down to this one. Okay, pictures. I'm going to add in a picture of a person. There we go. Boom. There's the person. Okay. Um an image. Okay, great. Um they even cut Canada off that map. What <laughs> Come on. Um okay. Uh okay, fine. So there's our person. Here's our bit of theory of personhood. Okay, great. Um, so uh, one step at a time, I have a beginning of a theory of personhood. We, we have some things to add to it real soon now, but what do I have to do to create a population of people? Speak quickly, yeah. We need the variable that uh, gives us the population parameter. Okay, where does that, where does the population live? In, in Maine, yeah, it's not living in each person. If it were population bacteria, it might live in each person, but no, it's 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 in Maine. Okay, so how do I add a how do I add a population to Maine? You've done it quite a few times in your exercise. You how do I do it? You go to palette and then you go to the how do I do it? Yeah, I drag this in. I drag from person in, right? Um, and I do population. Now, listen, um, I'm teaching you some things. These things are not. Like these aren't deep things, like how any logic works. It's just, we need to implement it. And so we have to use its tools. You know, this is not deep stuff. Okay, what sort of thing is it? Is it a single agent or population? Population indeed. How many people will be? Sure, we'll say a hundred first, but suppose I want to make it so I could, I could set different population sizes for different scenarios. How would I do that? I'd add a what, uh, Harriet? A parameter, yeah. Good. And Tony, were you going to say something too? Uh, there's a sense of truth. Same thing. Okay. Yeah. So I'm going to add a parameter. Parameters, the job of a parameter is to capture an assumption and communicate that assumption from the point of creation to where it's used. So I'm, I'm copying into, so where does the parameter leave? Main or person? Main. Yeah. Because it's a, it's the size of the population. So I dragged it in and, and I want to change it to be um, population size, I'll call it. What sort of type is it? Integer. So you pull this down and go up, right? Integer. Okay, good. And I'm going to make its default value. Sure, make its default 100. Okay, is that going to make that the population size? Is there something more I have to do? Yeah, we have to change in the population. We have to change this to be initial number of agents. What will be? Zero? Population, population size. size. Yeah, population size. Okay. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, if we run this model, what will we see? Run early, run often, please. Run early, run often. Okay, um, so here we go. If we run this, what will we see? We'll see 100 people stacked the top of each other like cordwood, right? I, I mean, it's like, here they are. They're all arrayed before us in a phalanx on top of each other. Um, you can tell there's 100. One, two, three, go count them. Um, but there's a hundred people. Okay, great. Well, we're, we're starting. Okay. I want to spread those people out around. This is nothing grand. This is nothing deep, but I, I'm just going to do it. I'm going to go to Maine. I go down to space and networks 
and I'm going to say the layout type is going to be random. And space and networks in main, in main. Okay. Okay, great. So in main, I went down space and networks. I said layout type random, and we're going to run it now. And what are we going to see as a result? There we are. Okay, they're spread around. Okay, awesome. Great. Now, uh, because it's a parameter, I could create another model, uh, another thing called, I'm going to create an experiment, and it's going to be called population 1,000. Okay, population 1,000. Fine. Um, and uh, I just added a scenario. What, what will I do to make it a population of 1,000? Tell me. Change the parameter. Change the parameter that's... The, Defined here and it's passed to main. This the scenario creates main um with and it uses this parameter to communicate the assumption. Remember, I told you parameters encode and communicate assumptions. This is just an any logic thing, but it's good to know because you're gonna need it for your exercises, your assignments, and your projects. Okay, population size a thousand. If I run this, what am I gonna see? I'm gonna see what? A thousand people. Um, a raid before me, like a thousand ships in the harbor of Sydney, as articulated by Captain Captain Cook. Okay, that's that's right. Okay, good. A thousand people spread out um, in a phalanx, uh, a square like the ancient Greek formations. Okay, great. So, ladies and gentlemen, we're we're cooking with gas now. Now let's add in. What do we need to add to each of these people to capture this theory? State charts. State charts. Okay, so. Where do the state charts live? Do they live in Maine? Person. They live in person because each person is governed by their own state and their own switching states. Okay, so we're going to person. Go to person. What do I do? Where do I go? I got a palette. Where in the palette? Yeah, well, I've got a person, the agent state chart. Okay, awesome. What do I need to drag in? Yeah, well, we need to drag in state. No, we need to drag in first uh, entry at the entry point. Okay, so this is going to be called smoking state chart. It's kind of nice if you give it a name that you know it's a state chart. If you see it, it's like, oh, it's not just smoking. It's smoking state chart. Okay, I know it's referring to the whole state chart. Okay, what are the three states here? Non-smoking, uh, smoking, and uh, former smoking. Yeah, but we generally don't say non-smoking. We say never smoking. Never Why smoking. do I say if I said non-smoking? Why would it be ambiguous? Because uh, it's we have the former smoker. We former smoker is also yeah. not smoking. It's also right. non-smoking, right? But former is formerly smoking. This is never smoking. Okay, great. And often it's defined as having smoked fewer than few a hundred cigarettes in in their life. Okay, never smoking. Um, and I'm going to drag down and I'm going to do current smoking, current smoker, or let's call it current smoker. Okay. And I'm going to call it never smoker, Wade. So a couple people online are saying that we signed. So... <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Uh, yeah. So, um, the problem is we, we really need to move quickly and live light on the land. Um, so uh, I think those who are falling behind will need to review the video, I think. And uh, they can ask questions online and wait. I'd be grateful if you could answer the question yeah. to, to let them catch up. I'll try to stop occasionally for explanation. And I'll call this former smoker. What do we need to do between these things? We need to add transitions. Where can we find transitions? Okay, in the state chart, and we grab a transition. Give me one transition to add. Yeah, never to 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 current, right? Okay, so what do I have to do to this? Like, can I run the model now? Why? What's 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 the problem? Not connected. How do I know if it's connected? Green is the color, and the and the transitions are the game. Yeah, so this is right. Okay, great. Um, so what should be this be called? Initiation. So show the name and make it initiation. 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 Okay. They initiate smoking. They start smoking. That's the term for it. Um, okay. 
And now, where else do we need transitions? Current to former. Yeah. Okay, current to former. What's this one? If if someone is a current smoker and then they become a former smoker, they switch to being a former smoker, what is that called? Quitting would be good. Cessation will be good. I'll call it quitting. Um, and I'm going to show the name. Okay, great. Great, ladies and gentlemen. Um, and what else do we need? Is there a missing transition? Sorry? Firm, former to current. Okay. Former to current. And what's this called? It's called relapse, ladies and gentlemen. It's called relapse. Okay. Um, okay, relapse. Okay, great. Okay, and I'll show the name and, and we'll prettify it. Okay, great. So we've got some some features of this now. Um, uh, now, how about if I want to see visually um, uh, what state they're in? Where? How could I do that? Yes, there you go. Yeah, I could change the color. And how how could I change the color? Anyone? So I I, I want to change the color. I'm gonna um. I'm going to need to change something that will encode the color. What could that thing be? A method? Sorry? Uh, a method. We could have a method. And in fact, in exercise six, I had a method. I'm going to show you something different this time. I'm going to show you. So method's a good way. I, 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 I think it's actually a very flexible way. But there's actually another way that's quite elegant, too. A variable. A variable. So I'm going to add in a variable here. It's good to know both these methods. Um, both these approaches, I drag in a variable and it's going to be called what? Color. And you're better bet your booty said it has a U in it. Okay. Uh, so it's called color. And and what's its type going to be? Do you think it's an agent? Is it a person? Is it a string? It's a color. It's a color. <laughs> okay, good. Good. And you notice it doesn't have a U because it's it's dictated by the it's dictated by the structures of the American Imperium. Um, okay, so it's called color, and we're gonna make it black first. Okay, great. Here's our color. It has an initial value of black. This is a Java variable for those for whom that's meaningful statement. Okay, so how are we gonna change color then based on what state they're in? Assign state. Assign. State yeah, we're gonna we're gonna assign to the color when they go into each state. into each state is right. And remember, I told you there's associated with each of these states is an entry action. There's there's handlers that we can fill in a bits of code here. So for never smoker, we're gonna change the color to be. I'm gonna say lime. It's gonna be lime. You <laughs> bet it's gonna be lime. Somehow you've seen this before, Nona. Um, lime, ladies and gentlemen. That's lime as in green. Lime green. Current smoker, uh, we're going to set it to be red. Okay? And former smoker, we're going to set it to be um, be gray, maybe? Yeah, okay. Color equals gray. Or is it E? Is it E or A? Yeah. Great. Oh, it's it's a it's a a. a, a. I I always get gray and I start to think about gray poupon. Oh wait wait wait, lime is not following. What is this? Um, I think we'll call it green. Uh, because maybe there's no. Oh wait wait, lime cannot be. It says lime cannot be assigned. Okay, this is strange. Okay. Lime, oh, I said lime equals red. No, color equals red. Um, lime would not equal the red. That, that's definitely not the case. Okay, so there was lime, but I set it to green. I'll change it back to lime with a nod towards Nona. Okay, there we go. Ladies and gentlemen, if I run this now, would I see them change color? Why, what one final thing has to be done? We have to link it in with the actual representation, right? Like there's a visual, rep this says color, but right now it's full of sound and fury signifying nothing, right? I mean, like it says color, but 
there's no there or there. <laughs> there's nothing that makes it the color operationally. So how do we make it the color? Let's go up to this thing here, this image. There we go. And we're going to make it uh, a make it the color. So we're going to go to, and uh-oh, we can't do it directly. We have to go in and we're going to have to frob it, ladies and gentlemen. We have to go into person, into this level and, and <laughs> shape body, um, which sounds like a bad YouTube ad. Um, and we're going to go need to go to appearance, okay? And it says line color and fill color. I'm going to do it with fill color. What do you think? So how did I do this? I went to person here and I opened presentation. I drilled down to level. I drilled down to person. This is kind of a pain of using the person icon. Wade may know a better way to do it, but it's kind of a kind of a, a painful thing. It's easier with an oval. Ovals are my friend for that reason. I just thought you'd like to see this. Okay, and what am I gonna put in for the fill color? I changed this to be dynamic value. What do I wanna fill in? Color, ladies and gentlemen. I wanna fill in color. I wanna build early, build often, up there, build. Building is your friend. Okay, okay. Now if I run the model, what should I see? <laughs> Okay, yes, indeed. So if I run this, I, I see some people are not <laughs> struggling with the timing, good. Okay, Um, and look at this, what's going on? What's going on? They changing at the constant rate? They're changing at a constant rate. Right now, are they what? All smoking, all, all the <laughs> pure smoking. Okay, so. Greens. So Not I don't think the model is fit for delivery to the stakeholder yet. We have a few more components. Yes, yeah, so uh, Harriet. Are we not seeing the color Yes. Yeah. It's, it's, it's not, to, it's a great question. It's to this agent. Color is a is an attribute of this agent. It's a characteristic. It's a bit of their state of that agent is actually their color. Now, in this case, the color is entirely dictated by the state chart. But in general, we could have the color be also take into account their, you know, their whether they have heart disease or whatever. We'll 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 see how we might capture this a little bit more in a moment. But okay, so why are they blinking in such heinous succession? Um, it's a timeout transition with a timeout of one year. So they smoke for a year and quit for a year, smoke for a year. Okay. So ladies and gentlemen, that's not quite what we want. So um, I'm going to set the initiation to be uh, something where we're going to set it for now to be 10% uh, per year. Okay. Point one, uh, and oh, sorry, it's not a timeout. What is it? It's a rate of point one per year. So what does that mean? Point one per year. Yeah, roughly it means ten percent per year, but it's continuously compounded, right? It's like at any time they during that year they could transition. Did you get that from that video? At any point they have a certain kick of the can at any day, right? Any day they have some small chance. Any any five minute interval, they have a chance of lighting up for the first time. That's scary, isn't it? Um, okay, so um, the the further you go down in chunks of time, the the less likely it'll happen in that particular chunk. But there's a chance it's continuous time. Okay, quitting. We're going to set this to be. Now I'm trying to do this in part to rehearse these concepts. So. If I told you the average smoker tries to quit four times a year, four times per year, what would this rate be on a per year basis? Sorry? 
because it's more time. Well, I hear a lot of guessing, and that's good. I welcome those guesses. It's going to be it's, it's, it's not four. It's four. It's four. That's the rate. That's the, the chance per unit time that it will happen. Right? Four per year. On average, you know, they will leave in one quarter of a year. Remember, remember the average time they spend there. Remember, I drew up that that curve here. Remember this? It's like one over alpha times e to the minus alpha d. And actually, the mean of this, the mean time they spend in the state before leaving, time in state, is actually one over alpha. So if if, if that were one. They spend an average of a year before between leaving. If if it's two, they spend an average time of one half of a year. If if they have a chance per year of leaving at point one, they spend how many years there on average? Ten. One over point one. So again, if one over the amount of time that they uh, sorry, the rate, uh, the amount of time they spend there is one over the rate. And so the rate here is four. Four per year, okay, four per year. And then relapse, it's it's even more likely they're gonna fall back, unfortunately. And so it, it'll be a rate, you know, maybe on average they fall back within two weeks. Gosh, those would be like 25 per year. <laughs> um, uh, within within two weeks is 25 two week periods in a year roughly 26 we'll make it right 52 weeks okay um now we're gonna refine this in a future session but here we go okay so if i run this now what will i see anyone oh no don't debug it no no don't don't go into the debugger oh no 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 i don't need that okay okay what's going on here what what do I see is happening? How many how many never smokers are there? Uh, no, there's very few anymore, right? There, everyone's either a current or a what? Or a for like I, I froze it and everyone's either a current smoker or weak smoker. Or a former smoker. Yeah. But people are falling but relapsing really quickly, and then they're then they're trying to quit. Okay. Um, now I'm ignoring a very big thing here, but okay. So this is going to be your challenge for your next take home exercise. So first of all, go turn this in. This is your uh, and, and indicate who you're turning it in with. Okay. I'll uh, I, I think I'll enable on the assignment here. Give me just a moment. I'm just going to enable it so you can put a bit of text here as well. And you could say who you worked with, okay? Um, so here we go. And I'm gonna say text entry, and there you go. Okay. Um, so ladies and gentlemen, turn that in. And I'm gonna ask you to add the, the Portuguese things, right? So the final thing you're gonna have to puzzle out is. More likely to get heart disease per year if you're in this state versus this one or this one. And we're gonna use that in this transition. And you're gonna use what you did for the color to give you a clue of how to do that. Somehow we need something that will communicate from this state chart over here on the left, the smoking state chart to the heart disease state chart what the risk per year is of developing heart disease. And we could do that with a what? A variable, a variable. We could set the variable and never smoke could be very low chance of getting heart disease per year. We could set it current smoke could have a higher chance of getting heart disease per year. Former smoker, medium low. And then having set that variable, where could we use that variable? In this, yes, Harriet. And the transition from healthy to, to, to heart disease will be driven by that variable. You get that as its rate. That's what we're gonna be using. I want you to think about those transitions. 
also. So the rate that I put in, the number of times they try to quit per year, or the number of times that they fall back at the smoking, okay, or or how quickly they fall back at the smoking. Because we're going to go into this more, and we're going to capture something. You're going to capture the longer they stay quit. Guess what? How that impacts them. The longer they stay quit, how do you think that impacts their chance of, of falling back into smoking? It makes it much less likely they'll start smoking again, right? They'll fall back. If they can stay quit for 10 years, their chance in the next week they're going to fall back into smoking is very low. If they just quit, it's much higher. That's what we're going to capture. Thank you, folks. Turn that in. And uh, we'll, we'll keep up the excitement next time. Okay. Thank you. Alpha is the rate. Yeah. One over alpha is the mean. That's the time. And before leaving, thank you. Thanks very much for joining. Yes. Dr. Osgood, uh, do, you, yeah. Yeah. do you have time for a few questions? Yes. Yes. Okay. There's a um, student here also. Let me just check.